Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is fishing vessel Sea View Chaser. On fire and sinking, over. Mayday, Sea View Chaser. This is the Coast Guard. We are scrambling the rescue helicopter to your assistance now. The Coast Guard is Airfield, uh, estimating at 1-1 on scene. Uh, Coast Guard, this is rescue helicopter. So now we're leaving the scene. Rescue helicopter, this is the Coast Guard. Many thanks for your assistance in this incident. Coast Guard out. Her Majesty's Coast Guard forms the operational arm of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. It's responsible for initiating and coordinating all civil maritime search and rescue within the UK search and rescue region. Coast Guard, Coast Guard, Mayday, Mayday, this is Motor Cruiser Sunray, over. Every year, in the vast waters around Great Britain, many potential tragedies begin to unfold. Mayday, Sunray, this is Portland Coast Guard. Uh, what is your position, over? There are 18 Maritime Rescue Coordination Centres, or MRCCs, in the UK, manned around the clock every day of the year by a team of up to six Coast Guards, the Watch. Coast Guard, this is Sunray. I'm 10 miles south of Portland Bill. 10 miles south of Portland Bill. I've lost my friend overboard, over. Uh, Mayday, Sunray, this is Portland Coast Guard. Uh, confirm how you fixed your position, over. The first thing we do is the same as any other Coast Guard station in the country, and that is to gather all the information that we can. Two degrees, 27 minutes west, over. It's very important that we ascertain the position of the casualty. Uh, we do this by asking for a GPS position, and we can further confirm the position by using our direction finders that will home in on the signal. Sunray, this is Portland Coast Guard. Roger, uh, what time did the person go overboard over? While the MRCC team carries on the job of gathering information, the search and rescue operation using lifeboats and helicopters starts in earnest. Uh, we're requesting the launch of a lifeboat to a man overboard from the vessel Sunray, 10 miles south of Portland Bill. Thank you. No go. You are scrambled to a man overboard from the motor vessel Sunray. With search and rescue teams in action, the operations room team start to plan and coordinate the rescue, while still maintaining crucial contact with the survivors. Roger, was the person a strong swimmer over? Information that we gather at the start of any incident is absolutely crucial. All that information enables us to better prosecute an incident. It helps us to be able to search and find the casualty. It also lets us know, for example, in a man overboard, what his likelihood is of survival. Four to six, gusting up to seven from the northeast. Once the search and rescue teams get to the area, a search pattern is developed to maximise the probability of finding the man overboard. The team has been building up a search plan utilising the latest technology called SARIS, the Search and Rescue Information System, to help us develop uh, a drift pattern where we think the man overboard will be. The drift start position is by this marker here and you can see that the tidal drift is in that general easterly direction that's the top vector and uh, with the wind from the north the target is actually being pushed down into this direction. My next choice is the type of search pattern that I'm going to employ. Now, Because this is a rapid response search area I'll select a expanding square search where we actually start at the date and position and then begin to work our way out. The blue area indicates what we can physically cover at 60 knots in an hour and that's giving us a probability of detection of around 79%. As Portland Coordination Centre together with the Coast Guard helicopter continue the search for the man overboard, another incident is unfolding at Falmouth. 
motor vessel auto mission is heading towards Southampton, Mick, which is 44,000 uh, and a half tonnes. He's reporting weather on scene east northeastly, 30 knots, both at 7. Short swell, heavy sea. A cruise ship, the Artemis, has lost power. No actual danger at the moment, but with passengers aboard, the Coast Guard watch assistant is already gathering information. He's a cruise vessel. He has about 1,700 people on board, and he's had a total engine failure about 40 miles south of Land's End. So we've taken the initial call details of the incident. We've plotted it. Artemis, like most commercial and leisure vessels, is equipped with AIS, the Automatic Identification System. The beauty of this chart is it tells us exactly where the vessel is and also we know exactly also what other SOLAS vessels are working in the area should they require any assistance. And also we have some very good uh, details about the vessel which will help us in any sort of planning. And we notice that the vessel's going to Southampton. We've got his latitude and longitude, uh, things like call sign and other bits of information that we have in a database on the right-hand side here. Suddenly, a message that Artemis has restarted her engines. Uh, this is uh, Falmouth Coast Guard, Roger. Copter making four knots and you're making full speed Southampton. Safe passage. We're listening VHF channel 16. He's uh, got steerage, mate. Yeah. He's currently making four knots. He's going to be powering up to full Southampton. The Coast Guard is not just responsible for search and rescue. The Straits of Dover is like a motorway, and it's a real traffic problem for the English and French Coast Guards. There are two opposing busy shipping lanes and dozens of passenger ferries continuously crossing the streams. Uh, Salma, this is Dover Coast Guard. Yes, good morning, sir. I see you in that position. What was your last port and what's your destination, please, over? CNIS is the Channel Navigation Information Service run by Dover Coast Guard. That's the radar surveillance of the Dover Strait. With AIS and radar surveillance of the straits and a VHF direction finder system, the Dover MRCC can watch over the shipping lanes and avoid potential conflicts. We have traffic separation lanes in the Dover Strait. The southwestbound lane here is responsibility of the British, run by Dover Coast Guard. And the northeastbound lane here, responsibility of the French, run by the French Navy at Cross Green A. We have very good cooperation with our French naval colleagues. We share quite a lot of information with them. We've actually shared uh, rescue resources with them too. So sometimes if we have a need for a helicopter, it's qu often quicker for us to get a French naval helicopter from Le Touquet. Among the Coast Guard's less well-known resources are the four tugs, on full-time standby around the coast, which can tow large vessels out of trouble or help with an incident. This three or four thousand tonne rock barge was anchored off Folkestone, which is just down by here. And in a southwesterly gale with very reduced visibility in rain, the barge broke its uh, cables and started drifting towards Dover. Uh, it was spotted from uh, the Coast Guard station here and our uh, tug at the time was the Anglian Monarch and she was then tasked to go and chase this barge um, with the intention of putting a line on board. It was a, quite a difficult job to do because the barge kept on disappearing in the rain squalls and what have you, but uh, at least it was held on radar. Then the difficulty then was boarding the barge to put the, the line on board. So all in all, it was a very difficult job. It could have been a complex job, but fortunately it worked almost first time and they managed to get a line on board. And the barge was towed clear of the coastal area and back towards Folkestone where they had to stay with the barge for the next couple of days until the weather moderated. The reach of Her Majesty's Coast Guard extends far beyond the UK coast. At Falmouth, the MRCC is able to help with incidents involving mariners anywhere in the world. Here at Falmouth, we have that ability not only to deal with incidents a half a nautical mile from the shore, but also three, four thousand nautical miles from our area. So we deal with lots of incidents which require maritime assistance outside of the UK search and rescue region. And that's done by our satellites, our COSPAS SARSAT system and our INMARSAT systems. So if a ship anywhere in the world sends a distress message via INMARSAT, it will automatically be passed to an earth station, which in many cases relays the message to Falmouth MRCC. Well, earlier today, MRCC Falmouth was contacted by the military authorities uh, in, in the Middle East. Uh, advising of us a, a distress situation. This position uh, just off of Aden uh, was the responsibility of the uh, Yemen authorities and uh, MRCC Falmouth's role 
is to contact the civil authorities and make sure all that is being done for the vessel in distress. Falmouth has made a reputation of dealing with incidents way outside of our area and also helping developing countries uh, look after their maritime rescue centres. Hello, Kinloss Falmouth. We had a telephone call from the Mission Control Centre at Royal Air Force Kinloss, who initially receive all United Kingdom uh, 406 emergency position indicating radio beacon alert. Uh, the beacon alert that we've just received uh, in our database was registered to fishing vessel Ocean Challenge. We now know the vessel operates out of the east coast of Scotland. The position from the beacon was also off the east coast of Scotland, so we will now pass all this information up to our colleagues up at Aberdeen. When we were made aware of the situation on board the Ocean Challenge, she was about as far away from the UK as it's possible to be and still be in UK waters. She had quite a serious fire on board at the time. The crew were abandoning to life raft as they were speaking to us. They were in their life raft for a short period before they were picked up by their sister fishing vessel. There was another infield oil supply vessel was able to assist us as well, and they took the Ocean Challenge in tow towards Peterhead, starting about here to this point, where the tow was handed over to another fishing vessel. A few hours after that, the fishing vessel actually did sink in among some oil pipelines. Anything that sinks in the North Sea is likely to sink somewhere close to a pipeline, and that's exactly what happened here. When the Ocean Challenge sank, we plotted the position using this interactive database, which allows us to see exactly what was going on round about it. And in this case, the sinking took place about four miles away from the main gas pipeline running into St Fergus, which wasn't close enough to threaten the pipeline. All I have to do is hover over the pipeline and it displays information relating to that pipeline. I can see what's located at either end of the pipeline, be that an oil installation or the terminal ashore. By calling up the installation, it tells me contact information as well as positional information. It also allows me to do a search on its position, which brings up a list of nearby installations as well as the range and bearing from the casualty installation itself. When an offshore installation calls us, we know straight away that's who it is. They've used the single point of contact. It's lit up on our screen as being from an oil installation. On taking the call, we're opening a dialogue with hopefully the offshore installation manager. So if we have a medic on board an installation, he can speak direct to the doctor with us monitoring. We can also have the aircraft listening in or speaking as well. So while it's on its way out to the installation, they have a full picture of what is happening. If helicopters are the most visible resources available to the MRCC, Coast Guard rescue teams are the most numerous. All around the UK coast, on cliffs, beaches, mudflats and shoreline, these teams of people, mostly volunteers, provide a very different search and rescue service. Would you mind asking your friend to bring the inflatable close to the shore? Over there. Yeah, for information, we've located the casualty. Once we get him on shore now, we're going to arrange for him to be taken to hospital and formally assessed before he's allowed home. The Coast Guard has responsibility not just for safety around our coastline, but also on some of our lakes. Coast Guard Rescue. Yeah, I wanted to tell me, um, I've just seen um, a swimmer, I think he's in difficulties. Swimmer in difficulties? Yeah. Whereabouts are you? I'm actually on the um, ferry, the, the bonus ferry at Windermere. And we've just sailed from uh, Ferry Nab. From the Nab to the other side? Yeah. Can you still see this man? No, no. Not seen it for about a minute now. Seems out of sight. Okay, yeah. Can I just take your name, please? Yeah, Harrison. Right, can I ask you, Mr. Harrison, if uh, any other changes, uh, or if you catch sight of the man again, call us back 999. Yeah, good afternoon, Windermere Lake Ones. Hello, it's Coast Guard of Liverpool. Hello there. Hi, we just got a 999 call from a member of the Coast Guard. ETA for the Coast Guard team is 10 minutes. The swimmer was last seen swimming towards an island called Belle Isle. Uh, we've responded by dispatching. Windermere Coast Guard and we've also dispatched the Lake Warden boat to rescue this person. Windermere Lake Warden, Liverpool Coast Guard, uh, we've picked up the casualty in position uh, Great Reference, Sierra Delta 3959062, over. Uh, this is Liverpool All Copied, uh, just for information, ambulance unit uh, standing by at Ferry Nab, over. Liverpool Coast Guard, uh, Windermere Lake Warden, Roger, we'll take the casualty direct to the Nab, over. 
At Belfast, the MRCC also coordinates mountain search and rescue. The Bourne Mountains are a very, very busy area for hikers, hill walkers. Typically, we would get someone who has maybe damaged an ankle, damaged a leg. When a triple nine call comes in, we will alert firstly the police mountain rescue team, quickly followed by the uh, Mourn Mountain Rescue or Northwest Mountain Rescue as required. If you could just excuse me one second, there's actually a 999 call Uncle. coming in now. Right. 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 Okay. So you think you're at Hare's Gap? Yeah, something uh, that's what he said. Your husband's broken his ankle, yeah. full of pain. Uh, what sort of clothing are you wearing? Um, well, I'm wearing a red sort of van, a racket, he's wearing a blue one. I will be to speak to the police mountain rescue coordinator, and then we will uh, task the Morn Mountain Rescue team. And once the Morn people get on scene, they'll advise us whether medical advice is required, and we can actually patch them through to the mountain rescue specialist doctor. Now they'll assess the situation and if it's a long carry or a difficult carry or if this chap has uh, any health problems they will probably ask us for a helicopter in which case we will immediately contact Dublin Coast Guard and request uh, rescue 116. Back at Portland the watch are still running the search and rescue operation. The search has drawn on various resources, including the RNLI lifeboat, a Royal Naval ship and a passing motor vessel, the Blenheim. The more vessels that we can get to proceed to the last known position of the man who's gone overboard, the higher his chances of being found. We may need to appoint a vessel to oversee the search. If we've got a large number of vessels all proceeding, Something like a warship, and we're fortunate having the warship time proceeding, may be able to act as on-scene coordinator and arrange for the vessels that, as they arrive on scene into a search pattern. I'm at Portland Coast Guard. This is motor vessel Blenheim. I have the casualty uh, visual and my ship's boat is recovering him now over. Mayday motor vessel Blenheim, this is uh, Portland Coast Guard. Uh, Roger, uh, could you confirm the condition uh, of the casualty? Over. The uh, recovery team reports uh, no visible injuries, but uh, very cold, uh, possibly hypothermic. Over. Mayday uh, motor vessel Blenheim, this is Portland Coast Guard. Uh, Roger, thank you. Out. Not unexpectedly, it sounds as if he's suffering from hypothermia. So the Coast Guard rescue helicopter will be tasked to proceed immediately to the motor vessel Blenheim and airlift the casualty straight to a helicopter landing site for onward transmission to hospital. If his condition appears to be very serious, it may well be that he will be flown straight into the landing site at the A&E at the local hospital. Every day lives are saved and disasters averted, not just by the bravery of the rescuers, but also by the watchers. Each of the 18 maritime rescue coordination centres vigilantly watch for people and shipping in difficulty, every hour of every day. Their skills, technology and commitment are admired around the world.